Welcome scholars to today's fifth grade reading lesson. Let's get started. All right, scholars, before we get started today, let's make sure we have all of our materials ready so we are set up for success. The first thing you'll need today is your reading textbook. The next thing you'll need is your reader's journal. You'll need your response sheet. And as always, a pen or a pencil, your favorite writing utensil. Now, once you have your materials, I want you to repeat after me. I am ready to learn when my mic is off until it is my turn to speak. I am ready to learn when my materials are in my learning space. I am ready to learn when I do not take pictures or record during the meetings. I promise TikTok will be there later. And I am ready to learn when I will respect my classmates and I will respect my learning time. So we have our things, we've set our norms, let's get started. All right, let's take a look at this week's vocabulary words. Our first vocabulary word is broken up into two syllables. Let's go ahead and sound it out. Climax, climax. And the climax of a story is its most important event, and it usually happens near the end of our story. At the exciting climax of the story, the hero ran into a burning building. Go ahead in your notebooks. I want you to come up with your own sentence using the word climax. Our next vocabulary word has just one syllable. Let's go ahead and sound it out. Prose. And unlike poetry, prose is ordinary writing, meaning it is in the form of sentences and paragraphs. For example, most stories are written as prose, but some are written as poems. Go ahead now in your notebook. I want you to write your own sentence using the word prose. And our next vocabulary word is broken up into three syllables. Let's sound it out. Dialogue, dialogue. And dialogue is the conversation amongst characters in a story. The way this character speaks in his dialogue helps me understand more about him. Go ahead now in your notebook. I want you to come up with your own sentence using the vocabulary word dialogue. For today's word study, we are going to focus on antonyms and synonyms. Antonyms and synonyms are two types of context clues to help us determine the meaning of unfamiliar words. Remember, context clues are text clues or visual clues in or around an unknown word. This could include word parts or words, sentences or paragraphs that precede or follow a specific word, sentence, or paragraph. Antonyms are words with the opposite meaning, whereas synonyms are words that have the same meaning. While reading, you might see words that are unfamiliar but as good readers, we have to use clues to help us determine the meaning of the word. Let's look at the first sentence. It says, a wonderful aroma filled the kitchen. I knew right away from the smell that my brother was baking cookies. I noticed in the sentence, it says, an aroma filled the kitchen and then I knew right away from the smell. Aroma and smell must mean the same thing. They are synonyms. We know aroma has a positive connotation 
because it's described as wonderful. Let's look at sentence two. I seldom play football, but I often play soccer. In this sentence, the word but gives us a clue that the writer is about to say something that is the opposite of the first part of the sentence. Seldom must mean the opposite of often, so I think it means not very often or rarely. Seldom and often are antonyms. Now I want you to read sentences three and four and use antonyms and synonyms to determine the meaning of frigid in sentence three and immense in sentence four. All right, scholars, let's look at the following words from page 87 of The Secret Garden. The words are obliged, strike, and trill. What I want for you to do now is look through the selection to find each unfamiliar word. Then I want you to look for synonyms or antonyms in the surrounding sentences to determine the word's meanings. What synonyms for these words could the author have used? After you finish, I want you to write your own sentences that use synonyms or antonyms to give hints about each word's meaning. And you're going to do this in your notebook. How does the genre affect the way the story is told? Throughout this module, we will gather information to help us answer the essential question. Remember students, genre means a particular type or category of literature, such as poetry, drama, mystery, or fantasy. Now, we are going to watch a video that will explore more about genre. As you watch, think about what is similar and different in each genre. Be prepared to discuss these similarities and differences. We now present Rita and the Lonely Peony, a story told in three genres. Here we see Rita on a stroll through her peony garden, always curious about the world around her. She has brought her book of peony facts. Rita is enthralled by the beautiful pinks and whites of the flowers. She opens to the beginning of her book, where she finds the foreword and reads, The peony nectar attracts ants. When a peony is still a close bud, ants crawl in, searching for nectar, opening up the petals as they scurry through. Ah, she has spotted an unusually tall, not yet blossomed peony. Fascinating. Just then, we have heard a sad little whimper. Huh? Is this peony crying? The peony was crying, and Lena, feeling more curious than ever, began her first dialogue with the flower. What's wrong? Oh, it's just that yo, you wouldn't understand. Please, Penny, I'd like to help. Well, I'm just so tall. Ants can't sense my nectar, and, well, it gets lonely up here. It's true, I'm tall. I reach great heights. Go an extraordinary place. But what good does it do if I'm not visited by an ant? Lena understood quite well how loneliness might feel. I know. And now help. I'll look all around for a friend who might feel. At our story's climax, Lena finds a little mate. She gently plumps him on a petal. And now I'll watch and wait. Oh, hello. Oh, thank you. What is your favorite genre of storytelling?
All right, let's take a look at today's reading objective. Our learning goal for today, I am learning to discuss specific ideas in an informational text that are important to the meaning. I'll know I can do this when I can have a dialogue about the connections between specific ideas in the text and how they contribute to meaning. I can listen to other points of view to confirm, extend, or clarify my understanding, and I can identify and talk about the ideas in the text that best represent its overall stated or implied meaning. And you'll demonstrate your learning by determining specific ideas in an informational text that are important to the meaning. Let's get started. The title of our module is What a Story. In this module, we will be reading selections from different genres that each tell a story. What do you know about different genres of literature and about the elements of a story? What are the different ways in which the module title can be interpreted? What I want for you to do now is turn to many ways to tell a story in your textbook on page 62 and 63. What should we expect to learn from reading the selection by previewing the title, headings, and subheadings? It looks that I will read to find out the different ways to tell a story. Now, I want you to take a moment and read the selection, Many Ways to Tell a Story. All right, boys and girls, that's a wrap for today's fifth grade reading lesson. I will see you again next time. Bye.